Hello ladies and gentlemen, Zig Shadow here and welcome to The Closure, also known by the developer of this mod as his own version of what Half-Life 2 Episode 3 will be. This mod came recently by one Leon Brinkman, also known in the internet as Spy Maps, and is well made as what is basically the sequel to Half-Life 2 Episode 2. Now, some of you guys requested me to let's play this mod despite the fact that I have already finished it twice so I'm just gonna go through this as a uh, someone who has already played commentary a commentary walkthrough to say the least and just to add a little bit spices to the mix I'm gonna play in the hard difficulty and shall be picking the more enemies thing too so let us immediately begin if you guys didn't know I'm playing the remote version in which I have changed every single part of the mod in one way or another and if that interests you then this should be an enjoyable experience no more copyrighted music no more weird strange weapons it'll all be half-life as it is and this loading it takes a bit of a while which gives me a lot of time to talk about some things such as actually it doesn't really give me a lot of time because it's about to start I should shut up now I don't know why, but I, I never really like trying to make fonts out of uh, brushes because if you guys didn't know, I'm a bit of a gold source mapper and I think some of the things that are in gold source also converts to source, so I never really want to like making fonts out of brushes. Anyway, yes, the main title, I've replaced it. Yep, the closure remote, ladies and gentlemen. I've also decided to tone down the shtick of... Okay. I've replaced the sound of the ringing noise in the up air folder to a bit of a more heartbeat noise, as you can see. This is just this is just recounting the things that happened during the end of episode 2 in which we saw our poor friend Eli Vance killed by the notoriously dangerous uh, combine advisor. And Alex crying over his lifeless body. Most unfortunate. Oh, God. No. No. Oh, no! Notice someone missing? Yes, I've also used the mod where one would get rid of Gordon. I will be remoting this mod continuously as I continue with this series, so if you guys see something different, even though I've not yet released it yet, that's probably the cause. For instance, the Eli Vance coffin, uh, I mean, sorry, the, I forgot what it's called, I think it's like a, a slab, not sure. Anyway, I removed the name because it's, it's kind of badly drawn, like someone did, like someone just drew a font on it in paint and then saved it, imported it with VTF and such. I've decided to just remove it all, including the ones for Barney and Kleiner. Yeah, if you guys didn't know, those two characters have the possibility to die. Well, at least one of them. Alex can also die. I am sorry, Gordon, but you'll have to postpone the flight with Alex to the Borealis. She can't go to the North Pole right now. She hasn't talked in several days. She doesn't eat or sleep. She just sits there. I know the expedition to the Borealis can't wait, but it has to. Alex is more important to me than that whole damn ship. Something is not right. Kleiner always keeps in contact with me on a daily basis. Maybe the Combine's found the launch platform. Or the zombies got him. Or he got infected somehow.
Something that really bothered me about this mod is the fact that some of the characters. Thanks, Some of the characters' eyeballs are kind of a bit to the left. I mean, yeah, Magnuson is perfectly fine in here, and so is Gordon in some part. But if you guys see it before, Alex, her eyes—they uh, seem almost non-existent, and that scares me. You're that, just that, that, time, that, that really We've got to move out before the combine picks us up. We're just getting ready to pull out. Yeah, the, the music overlays a bit here. I'm terribly sorry. There's really nothing I can do. Anyhow, we are treated to the cutscene of the uh, credits beginning, including how Gordon continues his journey. Anywho, a lot of people complain about the cutscenes in this mod. I don't really have a lot of problems with them, even though they are something that Valve won't exactly do if they were to ever create uh, their own version of what episode 3 is. But you know, I've already accepted the fact that this mod is just a fan creation and uh, the guy has his own vision of what he wants episode 3 to be like. I'm not gonna blame him for doing something that he loves. Uh, just... Some people might have a lot of problems with it. I can't really do anything about that. I'm also saying that since this is a more of a commentary walkthrough thing, I'm not gonna really do most of my let's play stick, stick in a way. I'm not gonna be stopping midway saying to subscribe and everything. You guys are free to do that all by yourself. I'm just gonna cut it in the middle with a fade, you know, because I would love to just speak and talk all the way through this, this entire mod, but my internet doesn't like me. Therefore, I have to like calm down a little bit. And somehow everyone just died because of that, for some reason. Holy shit. Also, I have a bit of a sore throat, so if you guys hear me being a bit soft late, lately, that's the cause. I used to be more of a screaming fellow, but uh, having a sore throat really doesn't help you. Anyway, yeah, we grab the gun and the pistol from the dead rebels really doesn't doesn't make sense how hitting something could kill everyone but barely hurt me it's not because of the AGV suit too because otherwise I've would gotten at least a bit of damage it, it would have been cooler if I would be given like a bit of a 15% damage I think like my house did that, that you got wounded a little bit during the intro you could try doing that Leon maybe not sure if he actually watches the YouTube videos I I, I know he responds to some of my messages in mob TV I've changed the ammo crates, they are back to the old Half-Life variant, of course I retextured them using textures by J Barnes and the ammo textures by Painkiller, thank you for the both of them, hopefully they don't mind me using them. Come on, where's that crabs? Okay, there we go, oops! Okay. Oh, okay, oh. I've also replaced the blood with the... The closure decides to change the alien blood to green for some reason. I've changed them back to yellow. As they should have been. As Valve intended them to be. Anyhow, we're, we're about to see the first Metro Cop. In the closure, these guys are actually... They, they look like HECU members. Which is very strange because the combine is a intergalactic thing and they merge humans, so it's kind of weird. I've already re replaced them. None of that. Come on, you bastard. There we go. Another thing that this mod also does is change the grenade. No longer we have to face the flashbang based grenade. It always bothered me in the closure when the grenade actually looks more like a flashbang. It also bothered me in other games as well because, dude, it's a flashbang. It's obviously a flashbang. Why are you trying to make it look like a frag grenade? It, it's not a frag grenade, it's a flashbang. Contact 
Give me a second. There we go. Really effective strategy to cook up the grenade and then throw it. Although I sort of prefer the Half-Life 1 way. The Half-Life 2 way is very random. Because it, your way to cook grenades is to basically throw them and hope for the best. And well, it's not really what I would really like to cook grenades with. Hopefully Valve, if they ever actually find the time to make Half-Life 3, fix that little issue. Anyway, let's charge. In order to speed up time, I'm going to use host frame rate to speed this up. Okay. There we go. And a bit of health. Okay, there we go. Okay, back to the main truck up. I accept, accept that this is a cost, custom model by one M184, I believe. Props to that guy. Or gal. I don't really know. Anywho, that door is going to blow up, so... Well, that was a mistake. A severe mistake indeed. That grenade went through the door though, so I'm guessing that the door was just... One of those funk things that disappear. I've also replaced the health bottles and such with the proper items. They will all be in the link in the description. I've put every single one of the things. Uh, and here's another cutscene. I don't mind cutscenes in a Half-Life modification if it's done well, but uh, sometimes in the closure it does feel like overblown little. Like there's too much cutscene without the need for it. I've recently been playing a modification as well called Under Hell. I'm not gonna remote that though because I don't know how I'm gonna remote something like that. It's already perfect as it is and well MXD says that they're going to like make a new version with all the things so people, people are already doing the remotes for me. I'm not gonna do that. Anywho, there's one guy over there, I'm just gonna go right it. I don't think he's dead yet, so... Okay, too much mana hacks, too much mana hacks. Almost forgot I have to grab the gun. Most effective tool of getting rid of mana hacks. Come here, come here, come here. Oh, bloody hell. I was hoping I didn't have to do that. Anywho... There we go. Very effective strategy when fighting enemies. Just cook a grenade and use the grappling gun as a semi-grenade launcher. Very effective way to kill enemies in Half-Life. In fact, it's very useful when you're playing on hard because enemies tend to swarm you a lot. Especially in this mod. In this, this mod has a lot of enemies that are going to swarm you immediately.